All right, guys, welcome back to the pre-show. Um, today we're doing it from our kitchen, but you guys are seeing this live. So, yeah. so you're welcome. So we're live from the kitchen. We're currently all on airplanes the except for Nolan. And Nolan's our special guest, Nolan. Nolan. If you welcome. guys don't know, Nolan is the social media guru of the PBA. And he did nerd out with Nolan once, and then he wanted to do it again. We're like, you're just going to do the whole show with us. So, hey. Right. Thanks welcome. for having me on, guys. Appreciate yeah, welcome. it. welcome. Nolan's got all of the things that we the fail <laughs> to come prepared for. We he's bring got, the inside on the lanes. He brings the numbers and stats. He's got stats. He's got stats. He's got stats and Big numbers, numbers and stats and numbers. And he's got it all. Listen. And history. He also has history. We don't have any of those things. We just have what happened on the lanes that week, mm -hmm. which is very important. It's better than what I have on the lanes. We have the inside tip of what's going on on the lanes. That's why we Nolan, make a great team. Nolan has everything else. That's why we make a great team. Um, this is the last event of the year, besides the playoffs and the tour finals. This, this is, is the last, last actual event, event yeah. tournament of champions. And uh, no surprise, Anthony Simonson and EJ are one and two. Yeah, it just feels right. It just feels it right. It does. Yeah, they've like, been the guys for the last They've been years. the guys all year, and it's also... And last year. But it, it could also bring a little bit of the player of the year race into effect. Um, Simon's bowled very well. EJ is by far the leader. However, who's to say Simo doesn't win here and enter himself into the chat? They're close. How far off is Simo off of points? Because Bill was the front runner for the longest time until EJ won last week at the World Championships, running the ladder, which was sick. So let's go to our points, man. Also, we predicted that, just saying. Nolan, if Nolan, Simo the guy. wins, where does that put him in points? It probably puts him in second. Oh, he's already in second. He's already in second. With minimum points, he's in second. Okay. If now, he wins... And say EJ gets his minimum points, loses his first match, finishes third. It's not what we need. It is, uh, EJ would have 29,900 points, Simo 25,000. Wow, okay. So Simo's bowled equally well. And there's also two events to end the season with the PBA playoffs as well as the tour finals. And with both of those being titles up for grabs, Simo could win one of those and EJ could win none. And then you could say that Simon would be the front runner. Do those count towards the player of the year? They, well, it all does. Yeah. Well, because it's a title, it doesn't count for points, but it does count for like- We vote after if, the tour finals? We vote after all of this. So like, Not to mention the Lucy, the Lucy and the, the, and the trios. trios. Wait, so we vote we at vote the end of the year? We vote after the season is, after all of the titles Why have been given out, that? that's when we vote. I so know, like, I sent you the email for your vote, so. Technically, there are now. four titles left. Yeah. Five. Lucky Larson. Oh. Lucky uh, Larson. And this is basically what happened last year. EJ won the world championship. Felt like the race was over. Simon comes in, wins the Lucy, almost wins the Lucky Larson, and things got real interesting right down the stretch again. That is true. When voting, I do not count the Lucky Larson into my mental notes. But if it was such a close race, and they, have to. and they both went over to bowl, which I don't think EJ, EJ did not bowl last year. And I'm I told he will likely bowl this year. Okay, well I was gonna say, because I don't think EJ usually does. But no. I know his wife was pregnant last year, so that probably could have come into, there might have been doctor's visits and such in play as well, so. Right. Um, but that being said, the player of the year race, this is the last big tournament, big points, big money. This is it, it's the last to the win. Year. Let me ask you guys a question, because I've only been out here for two years. Yes. And I think EJ and Simon have won almost half of the titles that I've been out here for. Yeah, we need you to leave. Yeah. Obviously, Belmont must be included in any of these conversations. How much better are those two than so much. anybody else? It just, it, it, I would say those three. Yeah, because like, like, I, would, I would definitely put Belmont. Yes, while you've been out here, Belmont hasn't won all of those events like these two have. But... Like, 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 you, just, like you just said right before the cameras turned on, you said Belmo has made every single match play this year. Does that not say something? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we feel like he's had a bad year because his standard is because he hasn't won winning titles. He hasn't won winning multiple titles, making eighty percent of the shows, and it's just hard to do that. And what he was doing at that period of time when he was winning everything was just unheard of. And now we're seeing EJ and, and Simo do that. Simo finished top ten all year last year. That's a player of the year. And this year he didn't run. finish top 10 at the first event. And, and I was like, he's having an off year, boys. We got he's him. He's human. <laughs> we can do it. And, and that's then the he thing. was right back. So. Even I'm like, 
Simon's kind of had a bad year, and he's second in points. And even I was like, man, he's And it's a gap between Because there's there. been a couple events that he hasn't bowled great, where usually it's like, when is Simon ever not a contender? But, and the thing is, you said he's like second in points, and he's second in points with like a decent gap between third. And yeah. Bill, and Bill were like, man, Bill's bowled amazing. Yeah. Good, yeah. Because Bill had the hot start, and he has slowly tapered off. Yeah. And then the I other do think, way around. So I do think the player of the year race, if EJ wins, Obviously, he wins the player That's of the year. A lie. It doesn't matter. He'll win back to back player of the years. It doesn't matter if he doesn't win a single event and Simo wins all of them in the back half of the year. Like, no, I mean, yeah. He would probably, with two majors to none, Simo would have, would have to probably win. He would have to win all of them, which is so unlikely. But if Simo but wins, who's Simo, your vote? So, I mean, if Simo wins, my vote right now would be probably EJ, he's but made like EJ and Simo both won the last two Lucky Larsons, so, or not Lucky Larsons, they both, they both won the last two Lucys, so you gotta if, bring those into play. if either of those win, then you could bring that into play, the Jonesboro Trios, you could bring that into play, like, then the back half of the extra part of the season, the playoffs, the, matters more. the playoffs matter, the finals matter, because we're looking like, oh yeah, EJ made all those telecasts and won a major and won a regular event. Simon won a major and made other major telecasts. Did, does he have two titles or one? One, he climbed the ladder in Springfield. Yep. So this would be his second title. EJ would have two titles. EJ would have all the telecasts, but with an equal number of titles, it would really come down to, okay, who can win that extra event well, at the end of the It would have to be a win to separate Otherwise, because otherwise it's got to be EJ. I mean, he's made nine shows, ten, eight, eight shows. Eight out of thirteen, and the, he missed the Masters show by, by one, minutes. by one, one spot. spot. And he was yeah, super sick. Yeah, and sitting next to me, which uh, was a little scary in the moment. But, so, so I'll hold the trash can. An, enough EJ and Simon talk, just because. I mean, we talk about them every because everyone just week. knows. Like everyone just knows what they're doing because they're there every week. Um, we have three different faces where we have Sterner in the telecast and we have Ogle in the telecast, which we haven't seen all year. But Ogle, we did see it right here last year. Ogle had a great season last year and it was like his breakout year where he bowled full time and he was like top eight in points yeah, and like one. Like and yeah, exactly. And this year has not bowled very good at all. Like I, he was like in 30th in points or something like that I coming into this a week. deeper than that, but I, I think I talked to Ogle last year about this. Um, I said, I was like, oh, like what? Like I know you have the lawn care business. Like, what's the deal? It's only him. Mm -hmm. It's not like he doesn't have a crew of people. Yeah, he yeah. owns his own business, and he was like, it's one of those things. Like, if the front half of the year goes well, then I just keep Stay bowling. out there. Yeah. If it goes poorly, I don't because if it goes poorly, there's nothing really on the line for me the back half of the season except me losing business. Yeah. And the and that business keeps him occupied. April through the end of the year. Right. Right. So there's there's a lot of that. And then I think when he bowled so well last year, he was like, you know, the way it looks, I can make a good, good salary. I can almost double up my business. Years, I, do, yeah. I do great at bowling and I could match it with my business and make about the same amount of money if I bowl really well. So I think, I don't know his numbers on the business side, but I know that right. obviously when you start bowling well, you could make 100,000 couple mm -hmm. hundred that you can make a hundred thousand in a week yeah. like he like he's got a right. shot at this week. yeah in a couple weeks it's so so like ogle we just haven't really seen bowl that well this year comparative to top five in points last year really good solid year um and then i think it's fitting that jason sterner makes his telecast because this was one of the very few events where scores were low it was much more of a grind it felt more like a major event because this year the scores have been so high and it's just been a whole different mindset and scoring pace. And we all know Sh Sterner's like a grinder, a shot maker. He did, he isn't a guy that's gonna like lead events by a mile, but he's always close and he always finds a way in. So it's only fitting that he snags the last spot. He's when it's two, the hardest tournament of the year. When it was, yeah, whenever Outside we, the US Open. Right, outside the US Open, this was the hardest tournament. And we've, we just came off of everyone averaging 240, so it felt even harder on top of what it really was. And then Marshall Kent's in there, which he's, he's kind of had like the, the new breakout year again. I say that again because he had a stint where he kind of, like he used to be the guy, and then he wasn't the guy the last couple years. 
and then he just kind of was okay and now won a title made a couple telecasts and here he is and for me it was this was the year where he finally got used to the bowling balls Mm -hmm. he was throwing yeah it was the transition he was throwing storm balls for a while bowled very well yep then he was throwing big bowling balls that went very poorly for him no good and then he switched back to Brunswick two years ago yep had you you almost and for most guys you give them a year to figure it out yeah like hey this year hopefully you make some cash like hopefully you make some cuts maybe you make a telecast yeah. but outside of that like it's the we're, re- we're really just like hoping you figure it out and then the next year that's when we expect you to perform which right. is exactly what happened he's when, made when multiple tv companies shows like that why, why what what is it about company to company that makes it different and having to adapt just it's, all all bowling balls are different each yeah. company has kind of a characteristic a characteristic what that their, their balls, balls kind of do yeah. mm-hmm. um I would say the companies overall as a whole are all closer than they used to be. They're much closer. Ten years ago, Brunswick used to have really good solid bowling balls, really good big hooking bowling balls, and when it came to pearl bowling balls, they couldn't keep up. They weren't as good as Storm. But with Storm, they had really good pearl bowling balls, but didn't quite have the solid bowling ball market down, where Brunswick had Nirvanas and such that guys would throw all the time and loved. Mm -hmm. And then Motive has been that new company that's just been slowly figuring it out. And I think now all companies have all shapes. It's just Storm might have more of the shiny ball. Brunswick still has more of the shiny of the solid ball market. It's what their progression look like. And Motive has a little less down lane reaction or a little less overall response to friction. So when you go from company to company, it's like, okay, well, what layouts do I have to put on the balls to get the shapes that I like to see? Mm-hmm. Let's figure it out. Let's drill a million bowling balls. I think less than let's that. Fix, let's change the game a little bit. And I think Marshall, that's what I saw out of Marshall, was he, when he was on big bowling, physically, he, was he, looked, smacking on he looked like he was trying to hit it as hard as he could. He to, still does that. To times. get the balls to hook. Yeah. Now, he can do that to get them to hook more, but he doesn't need to do it every week. Mm-hmm. I think, too, the big thing about changing companies is not just like, okay, what layouts? How do I got to drill balls to flare less and more to roll well for me? It's also the progressions of like, okay, when I'm throwing these balls at the beginning of the block, what are the next balls I got to get into? Like, what are the adjustments that you have to make? Because what you throw at the end of a block with Storm stuff versus Brunswick versus Motive, it just all looks different depending on what their balls do. So I think that's more important than just like layouts. Because I think layouts are always pretty close. You drill similar layouts to every company, but it's like, what balls do I get into? What balls look good and bad at what times? And I feel like it's the progressions and of learning that. The quicker you make those adjustments, that could be the difference between making the show and finishing the Every ball. single time. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's the yeah. back half of a match play block when you're in fifth and you're trying to get to third or yeah. something. Or you say, oh, okay, well, last year, this is kind of the progression I took. This year, this is the progression I took. And that two, three ball after the ball on the fresh, I can't figure out. Yeah. And now, like, Marshall goes from hypothetically last year not making a match play this year leading in the tournament because I mean, he figured out the balls he figured out yeah, one of the titles and made a couple of tennis and it's, and it's not always hey like a guy like prather might not and this is i'm not saying he does or doesn't but i'm saying a guy like prather might not like the storm summit mitch might yeah marshall might love the hammer effect mm-hmm. kevin might not mm-hmm. yeah but when you go from company to company you're like oh these are the guy these are the balls that these guys like so let me drill all of those yeah. Okay, well, I like like half of those. You gotta find so the now cops. I have to find the other half to fill in those spots that those guys already had figured out. I gotta figure it out for myself. Right. Yeah, I think too, the big thing, like you said, you hit it spot on. Like Marshall has always like up hit it, but you can tell, you can tell bowlers create bad habits when they're throwing balls that don't match up to them. Not saying that the balls suck or whatever, but if a ball doesn't match up to you, you now have to change what you do physically to make it do the right thing. And that's what you saw with Marshall. And then last year, he was up hanging it. His, his role was so forward because he was trying to get those big balls to like actually pick up in the mid lane. But they were already doing it. And, and now, this year, I told him when he won in Chicago, right? Mm-hmm. I told him, I was that like, was hey, dude. one of the coolest eighth, ninth, tenth frames I've ever I seen. I bowled next to him. And after the first day, I said, hey, wow. dude, for whatever this is worth, and like I don't see you bowl that often, but even I can tell your hand is in such a better spot than it was last year. Like it's nowhere near as forward. You actually can like move the hand a little quicker. It can get around a little easier. And he's like, yeah, dude, I've really been working on that. I had more time to work on my game. I was like, I can see that. And I only see you bowl three months out of the year. I haven't seen you bowl in nine months. And even I was like, immediately I was like, that's the Marshall hand that when he was like the golden child coming up seven he years ago. He was the one that got the PBA tour exempt. He got the commissioner's exemption to get into some fields because he was 
the college yeah, kid. Yeah, he was the guy. So let's get into these matches because we've kind of touched up on pretty much everybody for the most part. Um, and a lot is at stake in this event, starting with that first There's match. a lot at stake. So there is. We talked about Ogle and we talked about Sterner and we talked about the extra events that could pu push Simo and year. EJ towards player of the year. Ogle and Sterner actually have those events at stake. Those guys without wins on the TV show will not make those events. Yeah. Neither will I if they do win. <laughs> so there's for the, that. For the playoffs. <laughs> there's that, yeah. For the playoffs and the tour yeah. finals. So, Nolan, if you want to run down the numbers of the scenario. So, guys, this is the last event of the year. We obviously have a point system. We have top 16 for the playoffs, and then we have a two-year running total for the top eight for the tour finals. And a lot can happen to change up what those numbers look like coming all the way down to this last event. And for you guys who might not know, the PBA playoffs is a top 16 at the end of year event where the top 16 make it and these two guys are not in as of right now. Right. Um, it's $75,000 to win. It is a PBA tour title at after the season. It's like that bonus event. Yeah. It's like the playoffs. It's the playoffs. It's, it's literally the playoffs. playoffs. It's what you want to get it's to. It's the postseason. Yeah, it's what you want to get and to. When I talked to a bunch of you guys before the season, making the playoffs was the top goal. Because you know if you make the playoffs, you're bowling well throughout the year. Yeah. You're bowling well throughout the year. You've, you've probably you've made either a chance gotten, of winning. You've either gotten consistent points or you've made some shows. Yeah. Both of things, what you want to do, you want that means you've made a good set. That means you've probably made a really good earning throughout the year, and the playoffs is bonus money, guaranteed TV time. It's what we, it's what you want to bowl for. You want to bowl on TV for the big bucks. All right, let's go through these scenarios. Let's do it. Run let's... me through the list as of now. All right, our current top sixteen locked in the top top seven: EJ, Simo, Bill, Belmo, Kyle Chu. Marshall, who can climb higher, but he's, he's in there, and mm -hmm. Russo is seventh. And no matter what, these guys are top seven. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, also locked into playoff spots are Zach Wilkins, Boog, from the PTQ to playoffs. That's, that's, Wild. that's an amazing story. PTQ right Hall there. of Famer. Uh, he is. Jesper, Chris Vai, Tom Smallwood, you, sir, Packy Henryhan, and Graham Fawes, the last locked in playoff participant. Andrew Anderson and AJ Johnson are sitting at home freaking out right they're now. Gonna, they're going to be watching. Andrew texted me 30 minutes after the position round ended, and he said, is this the worst case scenario for me with how it's played on the show? And I was saying, it's not far from it, buddy. Yeah. It's um, because with one win, if Sterner beats Marshall in this first match, Sterner's in, AJ's out. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Matt Ogle has to make the title match in order to accrue enough points to leapfrog both of them because Andrew and AJ are so close in points. It's, they're separated by less than 80 points. Right. Yeah. So if you pass one, you pass them both. So if Ogle makes the title match, whoever's last out of there is out. Mm -hmm. So there is a scenario where if Sterner wins his first match, maybe he wins, uh, well, if he wins his first match, he bowls Ogle. Uh, so Andrew will be rooting for heavily for mm -hmm. Mr. Stern in that match because then if, if Ogle goes on to make the show, make the title match, and Stern wins that first match, both Andrew and AJ are out. That's crazy. It just comes all the way down to the last a couple the points. Well, the last, it's just crazy. And I was thinking, if those guys don't make the telecast, neither of them have a chance. Yeah. I, t I actually talked to Sterner um, about it. I was like, oh, like, do you know what you need for stuff like that? And he goes, Nah, I don't really care either. That's good. That's the way he to said, do it. Nah, I don't really care. I'm just trying to win the tournament. And yeah. I said, that's a great outlook. And, what is, and if so you he win the win tournament, one you probably get into everything. So, mm -hmm. This actually happened a couple years ago at the Masters. Norm, when Norm made that incredible run, mm -hmm. if he had beaten Simon in that title match in 2022, Bill O'Neill actually would have been the odd man out in the playoffs. Really? And, I remember and Bill O'Neill ended up winning. Was that the was year that he won? Kyle won that year. Kyle won yeah, there. Bill won before, I think. Yeah. The year before. Um, but I remember talking to Bill then, and he was like, I, I, I love Norm. I will not root against Norm. I'm not watching this show. Yeah. So he, had, he wanted nothing to do with it. That, yeah. The stress is going to be, it's, it's going to be odd. It's other, crazy. How, how would you feel? Well, let's ask you. Because if Ogle wins Let me two tell matches. You, this, this is a situation that I'm living right if, now. If Matt Ogle wins two matches, not only does he make the playoffs, but he passes Packy and will also qualify for the tour finals 
which is a two-year point total list. Yeah, so the two-year point, the tour finals is like the playoffs, but it's a two-year point total list, and that's the top eight only, whereas the playoffs is the top 16. So it's a little more exclusive of a group and a longer two-year stretch rather than the one year. Yes. Um, There's a lot of overlap. Uh, I can run through who is already locked in. I'll be buying the Wi-Fi on my flight. I'll be watching. I just want to know. And I, I want to know how it happens. I want you to stab me in the throat and I want to bleed out slow. <laughs> All right. EJ, Simo, Belmo, Bill, Kyle, Marshall, Jacob Butcher are locked into the tour finals. Yeah. That's By 10 points over a Let me So 10 and points guys, is equivalent. Let me, let me break this down for you guys. It's one spot at any tournament basically over a two year stretch of 28 tournaments. So if I finished one spot higher or he finished one spot lower, basically at any single tournament over the last two years, I would be guaranteed in and he would not. You know what that means? Make your spares, folks. Make your spares. 10 pins is pretty much all it probably would have taken at any tournament, except for this term. The next spot up was like 15 pins away. I looked. I definitely looked. I was like, tell me there's a scoring error somewhere. Tell me. It's is there, over the two years, what one shot would you take back to get those 10 points back? Oh, none. None. It is what it is. Like, he bowled better over the two-year stretch. Um, kind of. He, but he just bowled so well last year mm -hmm. to give himself the cushion where I bowled very well last year as well. I just didn't bowl well in the correct events. Yeah. This year, and this year was the opposite. Yeah. I bowled really well at the World Championships, really well at the players. Like the two majors I bowled really well at, and last year I bowled really well, and I won two events, both of them were tier threes. Mm -hmm. Just is what it is. Man, that's uh... All perspective. Yeah, I just, like it's one of those things, you bowl well, you live and learn, and yeah, maybe you focus that 10th frame of that one tournament one time, knowing that it might matter. But I'm one of those guys, I also always try and figure it out. I'm a guy that would switch balls the last game to try and figure it out for the following tournament. So I'm not gonna sit there and look at it, look back and be like, oh, well, if I didn't switch balls, yeah, if I didn't switch balls, maybe the following week, I would have finished 40th instead of 30th. So I don't know. I also don't see you as the type two, and this almost uh, cost Prather at the Sharp Championship, of just, he took his field ball, he just whipped it down there and he got eight. Kevin McHugh comes in, shoots 300, ties him for the last spot. And then won the roll off. Yeah, so had he, you know, that, that, that could have been one spot just because of one fill ball. One don't get me wrong. I That's why you don't cheat the game ever. Don't get me wrong. I opened my 10th frame of the TOZ in the last game. Oof. But it wouldn't matter. I checked. <laughs> I checked. I checked. Now, what if Butters had opened his last frame? Then it might have mattered. Maybe. You just can't count pins like that because yeah, there's so just, many places. Just, oh, especially over a two year stretch, like you're counting. You can't. But we could. But we and do, and up. I did, and I thought about that 159 I shot game four. <laughs> I thought about it, and it lives in my head rent free. A lot at stake for these postseason tournaments. Not a lot, if anything, at stake for the top 43, though. No. It's already locked. Already locked. Top 43 would be, this being the last term of the year, the top 43 is the cutoff. Yep. Um, so let's get into it. We got. Which, for the people that don't know, the top 43 is the exempt list. We are going to a tour uh, trials in August. So if you're not top 43 in points this year, you have to bowl the tour trials to be exempt for 2025. Which also real quick, it's a cool concept for all of you guys looking to, who already have PBA tour memberships or are looking to get a PBA tour membership or not a tour membership, but a PBA membership. It's one of those things that you could say, okay, well, I've always wanted to try the tour out. This is a time The to tour try. trials is the perfect way because you either make it through tour trials. I think it's a top 12 make it through. Top 12. So top 12 make it through at this one week long tournament that it will be kind of World Series style, multiple patterns, multiple centers even. And with that, you'll either know I can bowl all of the events on tour for the whole year and not have to pay for them. No money. Or, hey, maybe I don't try it. Maybe I go back to my nine to five and I'll try again at the tour trials next year. So it is a cool concept of like, hey, I don't have to go around chasing PTQ cuts. I can just do the trials, and if I make it, I'm in. If I don't, I'm going to go back to my 9 to 5. So I have the list. This is 99.9% .9 official, not 100% locked in. It's official. There's a slight chance 
you know, we got to rearrange some things, but very, very unlikely. Right. Um, so yeah, it's the same top 16 as the playoffs, obviously. I don't think I need to go through and re read up all the names here. Right. Yeah. But a couple key names that are, I'll say, some new faces into the, into the group. Uh, Knowles was, was there last year, but he proved it, proved it again this year. Mm -hmm. um, D. Ron Booker winning the Masters. D. Ron he's good, Booker. He's good to go. Eric Jones, who I don't know how many people knew of him nationwide a few weeks ago, but everybody knows back who he half, is now. Big back half, he bowled sick. Uh, Patrick Nebraski, he's, he's in. He made did. the Masters show last year, too, mm -hmm. but just didn't bowl full time, and then he actually got fired from his job or got let go from his job. They did a like a shrinking of his company size. He got let go and said, I guess I'm gonna go bowl full time and then immediately made the Masters telecast and finished second for fifty thousand dollars. That'll that'll help you out a little bit. That'll get you on some roller coasters. That's yeah, sure. that'll get you on some roller coasters for sure. Uh, Dio with his win um, a few weeks ago on Sheeta, that elevated him into the mix. Kyle Sherman as well, who only yeah. bowled half the year. There's the Kyle and Matt Sanders are the two players who were outside in. the 43 and saved, in some respects, saved their career with, a, with their performance at the yeah. TSC this week. Yeah, Sanders was outside looking in. Kyle had barely bowled this season. Hurt all year. Hurt baby on the way, all, all kinds of things going on for him. And he comes into this event almost wanting to withdraw. He was in so much pain. I mean, you guys saw it yeah, firsthand. He's... And he grinded out, needed about a top 19 or so finish to make it to 100% lock it in, and he finished eighth. That that's a huge. Lot. I think Ish. the Sanders, I think the Sanders one is a little huge. more not important but impressive because Kyle, we know he's he's he makes the playoffs like every year. He he just hasn't bowled, um, but Sanders has hasn't bowled great in the last couple of years, and he was on the outside looking in the whole time. And, and it's been a then while he sneaks, well. then he sneaks the match play, which he was at the bottom of standings after like the first four games. He shot 120 game two, mm -hmm. and he popped off and got in the match play, which was huge, and it got him into he the exam. He went about 200 over, a little over 200 over the last in the third round of qualifying, 60 clean, makes match play, and had he not made match play, he's out. Yes, yeah. he's, he's he entered 44th, and he does not jump into 43 without that that block. He told me it was. Probably the best round he's ever had on tour. Huge. Huge. <laughs> Man, to, to perform that level, knowing what's at stake, because he was well aware of what was at stake. For sure. Now, yeah. It's hard because usually a lot of guys will press in that situation. They'll bowl worse because they're so focused. They're squeezing and all that. And they're focused on making it not necessarily the things that they should be, which is yeah. like, let's make a good shot. Let's do the right thing. No, they're like, I need, hey, a strike. I need, I to make need this cut. for my career. Yes. Like, well, what's your backup plan? That might sneak in your head. Um, a couple more names here at the bottom. Some uh, newer faces. Nate Stubler, first full year. Bowled really well the first half of the year, and not stayed much the back half, but he just stayed, stayed on, in there. Just stayed in there. Yep. Second full year, he was a rookie last year. Finished fifth in rookie of the year voting. Mm -hmm. Pissed him off a little bit. Get more uh, friends. That's a <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. It's That's, just a it's a vote of for people that vote, yeah. or yes. Especially when there's somebody like Cortez who was like Well, yeah, they didn't bowl hardly any enough. events. Yeah. Any of the rookies didn't bowl hardly any of the events. Because they just couldn't get out of PTQs. Yeah. Thomas uh, Keiko. Keiko made it out of the TOC PTQ. To had he, get and in, had he not done that. He he went and bowled a regional after he missed a cut in an event. He went to Florida and bowled a non champs. And won that to even get into the PTQ the for the TLC. Of the season. We had yeah, off, he won a regional off, a couple weeks ago. We had an off time, and he went to a non-champs regional in Florida from like I don't remember where it was. I want to say it was like Delaware, or it wasn't Detroit. I think it was Delaware. Right before Delaware, or so after that, Delaware, yeah. he flew to Florida to bowl a non-champs regional, which was a one-day event. Yeah. Won it, flew back to the tournament to bowl the practice session because he knew he probably would have needed to get into the TOC for, I mean, if you want to bowl for a living, like you've got to try and bowl all the events. Yeah, you have to bowl. The TOC is a huge payout. You got to try and get into the TOC. It's and the points. triple points, it's everything, yeah. They, Zach Wilkins, who was locked into the top uh, for the playoffs already, but in a different scenario where he bowls a little bit worse, no regional title, can't bowl the TOC, he could have fallen out of the playoffs just because he couldn't bowl it, which is- Easily. A, a lot of huge Hall of Fame names. Just Snake, on the inside of the top three. In. Tommy Jones, 37th. Jacob, 38th. Jacob Butcher. Stu Williams, 40th. Escona, 41st. Sean Rash, 42nd. 
and the last man in, AJ Chapman. Do you know the points you know of how, how much lucky he made it by? Yeah, yes, Chap he yeah, he did because the whole scenario with uh, Nathan Bohr. I know, yeah, Nathan Bohr is the first man out, so, and Zach Tackett was the next man. Hear me out, interesting situation. Um, this might not make the video, but I hope it does. I mean, um, it's the story. The it situation is. is if Connor Pickford and Ryan, so if Tony remembered that Ryan Simonelli told him he was dropping out and Connor Pickford withdrew on time, then the extra four spots would not have been given out of the PTQ. Because they gave four extra spots. They gave four extra spots out of the PTQ. They gave two. They and gave then, two. And then, and, then, and then an additional two. They right? gave two to make up for the pairs. And then the two withdrew, so they had to add two more so that they had a whole extra pair. And instead, if those two wouldn't have withdrawn, they would have never gave away those four spots. If those spots. two would have withdrawn earlier, it just would have been the, the original, the original eight. eight. The situation is, if it was the original eight, Brad Miller and Sean Lavery don't beat Nathan Bohr in the TOC. He moves up two spots, AJ Chapman doesn't make it. Yeah, and Nathan Bohr made Nathan it. Because Nathan Bohr would make it instead as 43rd instead of AJ Chapman. And instead, Brad Miller makes it at 12, gets the call, and then bowls sick and finishes 8th or whatever he finished. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the storyline that I think a lot of people were rooting for this week as Brad led qualifying. Yeah. And they want him to make it all the way through. But right. it is interesting just how, like, if those guys withdrew when they should, or really if Connor withdrew when they should, and the tournament director remembered that Simonelli withdrew two weeks prior. It's just crazy how that worked out. Then if all that happened, then Nathan Bohr saves his job instead of AJ Chapman. And then AJ has to go bowl tour trials instead of Nathan Bohr. Yeah, which you gotta imagine Nathan Bohr is gonna make out of tour trials, but it's crazy that he has to bowl tour trials because of how when that he, panned just out. Just because of how it all panned out. It's, yeah. How much was the points difference between those two? Uh, 40, I think. 40 points? AJ, uh, that's a little more. Um, AJ finished with 55-20 because he could, he didn't, did he, he did not make it out of the PTQ. No, he didn't make it out of the PTQ. That's right. Yeah. Nathan, 54-88. 32 so about points. 32 points. So a spot or a couple spots. Two spots. Two spots in any event. Well, it, I think it's one, sp it would have been one, where Nathan finished, it would have been like one spot. Yeah. It's crazy. Wild. That's crazy. Spirit of matter. Let's get back to the tournament. Yeah. We, uh, we got a major tomorrow. <laughs> We you do have do. a major mall. We have a would, major in like 30 minutes. But to give you, yeah, to give you guys all the breakdown of the points and stuff, there's just so many moving parts at the end of the year with the new. Basically, there's a lot on the line for Matt Ogle and Jason Sterner. Yep. That sums it all. And Andrew so, Henderson and AJ Johnson. And Andrew Henderson and AJ Johnson. And Packy Hammer. And me. So. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So let's get into this first match. Let's get into the. We'll start talking about. The bets. The betting odds. which We again, don't guys, bet. The bowlers don't bet. Nolan doesn't bet, um, but we're going to talk about it because you guys probably bet. You guys might bet. You, you, guys guys probably bet, bet. On, you guys might bet on this. So, Jason Sterner being the biggest underdog is at plus 1,800. The odds on this are insane. Yeah. Keep going. 1,800. N next is Marshall Kent, who is at plus 1,400. Then you go to Ogle, who is plus 1,000. So, you've got – it's that's how it usually is. It's like plus 300, plus 300. That's kind of how it goes in the order. Then you go to EJ at plus 150. It's 850 – Difference on the odds. I think at most tournaments, it's been like a couple 12, hundred. Like it's been like last place or the five seed is like twelve hundred. Then maybe the four seeds like eight hundred. Then maybe the three seeds like six hundred. And then it would be like two fifty minus <laughs> yeah. one hundred and fifty or two fifty plus one hundred and fifty, yeah. whatever it is. It's plus one hundred and fifty for EJ as the two seed, and then Simo's minus one hundred and fourteen. So it's minus one hundred and fourteen. Plus 150, plus 1,014, 1,800. So, I have yet to see a two seed at plus 150. So clearly, yeah, exactly. So clearly we have the favorites there, which obviously those numbers speak for themselves because it's EJ and, and uh, Simo. Two front runners for player of the year. So, last term of the year, biggest money on the line. So, biggest odd spread, unfortunately, for the rest of the squad. So Marshall versus Jason. This is Jason's first telecast of the year. Marshall has a win. Marshall also has a couple big hiccups on telecast, and we keep seeing it from him. He made the, uh, when he beat Jesper in the match play at the World Series, what was that, Shark? No, it wasn't Cheetah. Shark, it was Cheetah. Cheetah. If you guys watched the match play, he Brooklyn in two games to beat Jesper in two games where he kind of has the yips. Um, who makes it out of this first match? Because no. I don't think you're going to see the massive misses from Sterner. I don't think you're going to see the massive misses from Marshall, Marshall either. either. I, 
again, I'm a fan of Marshall. He's on my PBA League team. That's my dog. I love Marshall. However, you have seen those moments. You also see the opposite side of it in Chicago. Where he Marshall up. won in Chicago. And if you look at his 8th, 9th, and 10th frames, All the shots perfect. were literally perfect. Yeah. They were not even a fraction of a board off. Right. And it was the same speed, same rev rate, the exact same line. It was like perfect, perfect, perfect title. Yeah, you know, I bring and up... And I think that the hiccups happen partially because of the patterns, like on Cheetah. If you miss in on Cheetah... It's going to do the wrong it thing. It does. It goes yeah. Brooklyn. That's what it yeah. does. If you, or miss out, if you miss out on Cheetah, it usually it hooks. Goes in. Yeah. But if you miss in on Cheetah, it usually hooks as well, and then you miss through the face. So, Or you have bad ball motion, you go Brooklyn. It's just I bring those up because not to be negative, not to immediately be like, Marshall sucks, he can't make a shot. It's more of like we're now down to the telecast and the stepladder where you're bowling one game. And that one sh errant shot where he might split – it can make all the difference whenever they're harder and stuff like this. So I have to bring that up where um, I, I just feel like we haven't really seen Sterner much. And he kind of clutched up to stay in to the telecast. Um, I think he's going to be a little hungry. I'm going to take Sterner to win the first one just because he hasn't quite been there. I think he's going to take advantage of. All right, let's go. It's the last event of the year. I haven't made telecast this year. Let's make a little noise. Just for funsies. I'll pick Marshall because I think he will have learned from his... He'll remember the good times, learn from the bad times. I would agree. And come back and just bowl a good... I think he's just going to bowl a good game. I would Whether agree. Whether he wins or loses, I just think he's going to bowl a good game. And if Sterner beats him, Sterner beats him. I agree, but I'm just going to say that Sterner's just going to beat him. Marshall's winning, but go ahead. It's a, it's a testament to... Like, Marshall wasn't really on his A game this week, and he's a four seed in a major, which is yeah. a huge testament to the growth. But of it always the feels on. like that. Like, Marshall, like, you kind of look up, and he just has, like, some couple shots out the window, and it's like, man, is he struggling? And then you're like, look up a little bit later, and he shoots like 820 for three, and you're like, what just happened? Yeah, those couple he shots just that does. missed the head pin were the only shots that missed. Yeah, it's, it's just weird how, like, <laughs> out, how can you average 260, and then out of nowhere you just like throw it in the gutter three times, and he just does that. But it's also because he's always all in on like the misses and on his shots. So it's like, but I'm going to give it to Sterner just because I think Sterner's going to have a little bit we more hunger. We won't make Nolan pick. Nolan, Nolan said I, he's I not going to pick you because he is the journalist. I will say, um, Sterner, I mean, th this is the same ladder as last year. Marshall is just swap out Belmo for Marshall, and it's essentially the same ladder from last year. That's crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. See, so, we wouldn't have known that if you weren't here. Was Thanks, Sterner Nolan. on the show last year? <laughs> yes. So Sterner bowled the first match against Belmo, and yeah. where you guys are talking about one shot's the difference. Yeah. Sterner has said a few times, I mean, it's the same pattern. It's the same pair. It's mm -hmm. been the same pair for 60 years. Take away the one shot where Sterner flagged the right and missed the head pin. Oh, that's right. He lost a bit of Belmo 231 to 217. Mm -hmm. Take away that shot. He probably beats Belmo. Mm -hmm. Could have beat Belmo. And Belmo ran Belmo, the ladder. Maybe. I don't know, man. And then everything's different. Of course. Everything's different. So and that, that gives me even more reason to say he's going to be hungry. Year. Yeah, you did. So did 17. 16 other people. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's, that's the other crazy part is like it's four of the same faces and Marshall's the new guy who was the eighth seed last year. Yeah. It's not like he came out of nowhere. He finished right. eighth last year this year. He's going to finish at worst fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and I just think that's going to even put more testament to Jason's a little more hungry because he might be like, all right, last year I was in the same predicament. I threw one shot out the window. We're not going to make that happen again. So I'm going center. You're going Marshall. We don't have a poll like we usually we do We have this the time. two practice heroes, by the way. These are the two guys. I'm not saying that I don't work hard because I think I work ridiculously hard. You do not work as hard as these two. However... Sterner and these these you guys, whether it's good or bad for their game, <laughs> they're practicing all the time. They practice more than anybody. Sterner practices every minute of every practice session, even if it's we have way two too hour late. practice sessions, and, and he he's is there, there from start to finish till the two hour mark, no matter what. Yep, every time. Um, crazy. My wrist is hurting right now thinking about it. Yeah. So, next match. Next match is the big match for you. But you can't be biased. You're a journalist packy right now. You're not, not bowler packy. Ogle's not one. <laughs> okay. So it's, it, I mean, if let's, we'll just pick Sterner. Okay. The people in the chat are going to pick Marshall. They're going to pick Marshall because They're going to pick Marshall, and he's been on shows, and the people love Marshall. Can we rock, paper, scissors for who, because you pick Marshall? I'll pick, pick Marshall. You it's pick rock, paper, scissors. And that's who the people will pick. Is it rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot? shoot? Okay. That's two or three? Two or three. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Hot paper scissors shoot. Beat that ass. Oh my Marshall's god. Marshall. <laughs> Moving on. 
Marshall moves on via rock, paper, scissors. I tried starting. That is how all ties will be broken. And that is okay. how Andrew Anderson made the playoffs. And that is how <laughs> yeah. Andrew Anderson made the playoffs. Okay, so the Marshall. Rock, paper, scissors back. <laughs> so Marshall Bowles, Ogle, you can't be biased. You got to be journalist packy. Um, These guys this is bowl. Ogle's first telecast. Ogle hasn't bowled very good this year based off last year. Like in we, I said mind, in my um, in my observation, both these guys have the same problem. Okay. Um, when it gets down to it, um, I will say, I think Marshall's better than Ogle. In the clutch? It, in the clutch. It just happens to Marshall. Yeah. Marshall gets there way more often. Yeah, yeah. However, so it's magnified. Yeah, and it, and it gets magnified because it seems like he's bowling on these short patterns where they're flat in the middle. Yeah. And he's willing to make the ball change or make the big move he's late. He's not afraid. He's willing to make the big move late to try and make it strike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Ogle just also seems to have the same issue where, like, you see that, like, the late miss. I just I have nightmares about the league and all of those telecasts where he just went Brooklyn every time to win. Mm-hmm. Like in the strike derby. He went Brooklyn in a roll-off with Darren. Mm-hmm. And all of these moments where he goes Brooklyn to win or he misses in our league match and goes Brooklyn, I'm like, okay, well, I guess it's just not our time to be. But with all of that being said, um, I do think both these guys get to the moment. And if it's a close match, I'll be curious to see who comes out on top, whether it's Ogle, Marshall. I don't really, like, yes, it would be nice if I made the playoffs or the tour finals. If I don't, I didn't deserve to be there because somebody bowled better than me. Yeah. I'm going to, something just tells me that Ogle's going to win just because I think it's going to get to that transition game, game two of the telecast, and as good as Marshall's bowled this year, I, I don't, it doesn't jump off the page that Marshall's going to run a ladder to me just because you can't have the random errors like he does to run a ladder. Well, I think they catch up to you pretty quickly if he throws kind of one out the to window. To your point, and with what Nolan was saying, it doesn't feel like it's been Marshall's week. Yeah, but, but he found a way. But he found a way. Yeah. And that could go two ways. That could be, oh my God, this is my time. Yeah. Let's it's just the stars are aligning. The stars are aligning. It's his, it's, or it you wasn't take your time. fourth and you're like, that's or good week. Or you're like, hey, it wasn't really my week. And it, 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 I it got fourth. Yeah. fourth. Yeah. On the flip side, it feels like it's been Ogle's week. Yeah, he, like, well, there was a point where he was leading where I was like, hey, he's about to pull away with this. Uh, yeah, and, and then Simon caught And then he will, and he slowly, yeah. you know, fell down the match play where guys beat him. He didn't bowl a million 250s the next block. Yeah. And, and so what you guys were saying earlier, I was talking to him and when he was leading, he was like, I'm starting to get ahead of myself. He's starting to picture, you know, being in that Bowling title. Bowling the title, yeah, yeah, yeah. While, while EJ and Simon were hunting him down. And you like, cannot look back in the rear view mirror with those guys. Yeah. And he, I mean, he still stayed up right with them. He was right with them until the yeah. last couple of games. So it's yeah, not I mean, like he fell seed. apart, but yeah. he, he, had a sig- he had a significant lead. And then you just saw it dwindle away late. Whether it was ball motion, him getting ahead of himself, I don't know. Something tells me that he just, he sneaks out this one, but just like what you said. He just seemed like he was in a spot to be leading at one point, and I think he's just going to bowl a little bit better game. He's going to sneak it out over Marshall. Marshall's going to be very happy with the fourth place finish. If, if Elbow's ball hits the pocket, I think he strikes more than any of these guys. Yeah. Outside of EJ. EJ strikes more. Well, yeah, it's more. hard to say that EJ when you strikes, have Simo and EJ, EJ above him. Well, I think Simo, not even. I think EJ strikes more than anybody when their ball hits the pocket, but Ogle's up there. Yeah. Like when his ball hit the pocket, for some reason, yeah, it agree. just strikes. He bowled in this exact match last year as the three seed, did not bowl his best. Tomorrow, it's not today, it's also his wife's birthday. So he's going to be mm, more he's pressure. Gonna be more pressure. That's more pressure. It could be. Pressure makes diamonds. Well, I think. <laughs> and pressure feels... also makes things explode. So <laughs> let's just. <laughs> pressure explodes pipes. It feels like one of those things where we're going to know in the third frame. Yeah, right? I would agree. If he's dialed in it's or if he's a little off. From the things that we've seen this year, I just don't know. Like d Rod, for example, at the Masters. You watch frame one and you're like, like run away, no chance he's winning. And then the next like five shots in a row, you're like, wow, he's throwing it amazing. Yeah. He threw it way left Brooklyn and then went like pocket, 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 pocket. And you're like, wow, man, he is here to play. Mm-hmm. Which I hope for Ogle it's a similar situation of like, Gets the nerves out early. Mm-hmm. That is the benefit of being on in that first match is you get the nerves out the way. So you pick an Ogle or you pick? Marshall? I think I think Ogle sneaks it out. Okay, I'll pick Marshall for obvious reasons. Yeah, because you have to be a journalist. <laughs> Let's go.
Let's go! Packy into hey, the tour I, finals. I, I don't know how. And I'm in the tour finals. I don't know how, rock, paper, but I am so match. bad at rock, paper, scissors. I never win. It's strategy. So Marshall sneaks it over Ogle due to rock, paper, scissors loss. And AJ of me. and Andrew thank me. Yeah. So now, Bowles, the two seed at plus 150, reigning player of the year, front runner player of the year, just won a major last week. I could go gonna, on all day. Do you guys <laughs> remember a few weeks ago when EJ made five straight shows and everybody was like, man, this guy really, like, he can't really get it done. And then he won two shows in three days yep. and now could become the first player to win three straight titles since 1971. That's the numbers Crazy. that we are coming with and you are. No one knows history. No one and knows was, stuff and things. I didn't know that. That's cool. Johnny Petraglia. Johnny Petraglia was the last one. 1971. He's going to be there front row tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He won the TOC for his third straight title in 1971. It's been 53 insane. years. Nobody's done it. Um... Wow. I'm just gonna get straight to the point. EJ's beating whoever he bowls. Hey, I was just about. To, I was just about <laughs> I'm to just say, gonna just keep it blunt, guys. He's <laughs> beating them. I'm, I was just about to say. I don't think it matters who won that last. Yeah, year. I think, I EJ think EJ's, EJ's winning. It's only right that EJ and Sam are gonna bowl for the TOC at the end of this year because they've been duking out for two straight years now. You should have just, just picked Ogle right. then because Ogle had to win twice to knock you out. So you could have just been the next guy for I five hope, minutes. I hope Ogle wins. <laughs> That first match, just so I can sweat it out more on the play. <laughs> That's such a lie. I'm gonna be like, ooh. That's such a lie. Yeah, so can we just please. can we just get to? We just EJ, think EJ also wins. has the same issue. What? That Ogle and Marshall have, where sometimes you see the shot that just. He did it really last happen. week, though. He didn't at the worlds. He, he didn't at the worlds. He, and he, I mean, and he didn't, and he didn't the show before that. That's what I'm saying. He so said I'm those not, two shows. That I think he's dialed in. He said those two shows were probably the best he's ever bowled on TV. Yeah. And I talked to EJ he about that. He even knows he has some well, of those errant moments. And I talked to EJ about that. I said, is it one of those things that you like, you let it get to you if you don't win? I, or I, I mentioned on the show, I said, it might be one of those things that EJ, EJ could be one of those guys that doesn't let those losses get to him on TV shows. Or he could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And yeah, then the yeah. next week, like literally two days later, he came up to me and he was like, hey, by the way, I watched the show. Also, EJ, we love you. Um, I do but, love that he watches the show. But he, I'm so that surprised. He watched the show. It surprised me too. But he watched the show and he was like, actually, it's funny you made that point. I remembered. And I was like, I don't remember what point I made. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we do talk about a lot. In the but show he was like, time. I remember that. He said that point you made about like me maybe caring, maybe not caring. He's like, no, I'm, I'm one of those guys kind of like you where like, I had a great week. I lost a game. And if a game means I was not the best bowler of the tournament, okay. Yeah. Good for you. That's not what it means to me. For sure. It means yeah, I it lost just happens. a game on TV. At the wrong time. And I'm gonna lose out I'm gonna lose more. It's gonna happen. And I'm gonna a win more. more. Yeah, for and sure. it's just gonna happen. He yeah. mentioned he mentioned this today during uh, interviews where it, the bowler's mentality versus like yesterday. the bowler's mentality. Yeah. Yesterday, not bad. Yesterday. We're time traveling. This is time traveling thing. Um, if a golfer, that's that's broken. If, no uh, if a golfer won 15 times, finished second 20 times, and made 40 top five finishes, mm -hmm. that's an incredible play, right? Yeah. If a bowler does that, not broken. We're thinking about how many how many they lost 20 title matches and they mm -hmm. lost another 40 times on the show versus yeah. just making it to the show 40 times yeah like there should it's almost like there should be much like there is in golf like okay well how many top fives did this guy have in his career how many top tens did this guy have in his career yeah we all like, talk about that the amount of top fives that ej has in his career is EJ, how many top fives does ej have this season eight and 13 events more than half he's finished top five how insane is that i can't wrap my brain around what you're doing you can't attach it i just can't i just can't it's so crazy watching EJ doing what he's doing and we get to witness it firsthand because he's just beating our brains in while we're trying to keep up. It's horrible and it's great all at the it, same time. It's so hard to really comprehend what he's doing that it just feels like it's not even real. I'm like, he's not even really that good, is he? And then I'm like, I can't even comprehend doing what he's doing. I just, it, it literally can't wrap my brain around it. Last it's year, It's like, was... man, this has to be a fluke. And I'm like, it's literally not. <laughs> Last year he was 11 top fives in 16 events. So dumb. This year is. It's so dumb in the best way possible. Good God. So, EJ Tackett versus Anthony Simonson, the two front runner play of the years for the last two years. Um, you think they're duking it out? 
And I'm gonna rock, paper, scissors you because I think they're duking it out. But who do you so think you want is, some? You want some, a couple more nuggets here? Give well, yeah, nuggets. please. Simo has been a top two seed at this tournament for the last five years. What? One of those. And he hasn't won a TOC yet. And he has not won a TOC yet. And he's been Would this complete the triple, cl- cri- triple crown for him? No, because he hasn't won the World Series either, no. the World Championships. He just wins the U.S. Open and the Masters every year. He and, just alternates which one he wants. And he doesn't like the USBC. That's crazy. Um, Cut that out. He's, uh, no, leave it. He did lead the U.S. Open earlier this year, though. So this is the second number one seed at a major. He's going to get it done. I'm going to say this, that I feel like, and now Simo's standard is just so ridiculously high. Because I think Simo's the most talented bowler to ever touch a bowling ball when it comes to skill and bag and tricks and things. Um, I think I think it's only fitting that Simo's going to win this event because I feel like he's kind of he didn't bowl very good at the World Series. Like, at all. Why do yeah, I you say that. Say, why do I want to say that this is an off year for Simon? I know. It does feel like one, and <laughs> so, he's not, it's not, though. But He just it, didn't th- make the top 16 at the World It's because he was top 10 every event last year. So. Literally every single but, but time. We, but we saw him go, like, minus in Delaware, which I've, I never even think it was possible that Anthony Simonson could not go plus Almost in an event. Cut. Huh? Almost made the cut the last one. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like, he, I mean, he did make the world's. In some respects, because he pulled back up for half of the first round of shark. Yeah. I wish I he would have done it the whole time. He pulled back up for a game and a half, and I said, wow. And then he struck out the back half of the second game and said a couple of choice words. He said to I everybody. The whole and, field. And said, I gave you guys a he said, I gave you guys a 50 pin head, head start. start. Watch out. And then you look up and he yelled just, it to everybody. Yeah. And I was like, I'm sitting there like this. Oh my God, here he goes. Here he comes. He went 280 over that night. Yeah. I uh, led, the, led the next block. <laughs> I just, he wanted to. Like when we saw match play and we were like, <laughs> all right, Brad's leading. That story's awesome. And then you saw Ogle sneak up. And then you were like, I've seen this. Like once Ogle is striking, he's going to stay up there in the top five for sure. And then we started seeing Snymo's name sneak up. And then we immediately go, Simon's going to lead this event. Like, we called it game three of match play. I we're actually, like, he's going to be the leader. I don't know if you were standing next to me in the paddock when we were doing roll call before the tournament started. I said he was going to bowl well then. Who? Simon? Yeah. Old prediction. It just felt like uh, it was going to happen. Mm, mm, Simon does this thing where he gets angry on purpose. To hype him To up. fire himself up to bowl well. And it works every time. And he... he said something with the tournament director in the paddock about like one of the rules and i was like i've seen this he's 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 just i was like he's, just, purpose. he's giving himself a little bit of a little bit of something to get a little upset about to try and help himself focus a little more and now he's going to lead the tournament or he's going to win this tournament he's just choosing to bowl well before the tournament even starts yeah that's interesting because from my perspective as the media guy watching all you guys, he looked so calm this week. I, no, I would agree. It was and very level-headed throughout the field this week. It was very pleasant. And I think he fires himself up, not in a... Outwardly. Mm-hmm. This week, it wasn't as outwardly. It was like, all right, like let me pick a couple things along the way, and now I'm going like, to zone in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm and not going to talk to anybody. I'm not going to look at anybody. If something makes me mad, I'm going to release that anger, and I'm going to channel right back in. I talk about this pretty often with all sports. When you look at a great in any sport, he's the Michael Jordan. They have they have those moments where you can just tell they're so zoned in that nothing you can do is going to change that. When Steph Curry gets hot, you're like, here we go. He's about to drop 50. He's about to make six in a row. When Tiger Woods gets in that mode on Sundays, it's like he's going to chase down the leader and win. Simo has that mode, and we've seen it a million times. And then when you get into match play, and like he, he kind of fries out at times, and, and anyone that's watched Simon knows that. Like he's very vocal, and he, he, he's very passionate. He but doesn't there's times, he the But anger. there's times where that anger disappears, and even if he's bowling bad, he's so calm, and when he's really calm, that's when I'm like, oh, he's about mm-hmm. to pop off. Because it's like, he just knows. I might be mad, I just missed there, but he's like, I got everyone where I want him. And that's how he was, just calm all week, just found his way up to the top. We saw him uh, right before the position round. And I, I just said, dude, you're a stud. I knew you were going to do this. And he's like, thanks, bro. And I was like, good luck on Sunday. So I think Simon's winning. I just. I also think Simon wins. Yeah. One other thing to mention with EJ is he did hurt his shoulder, his shoulder a little area. bit. 
and uh, I believe it was game two of round two, somewhere mm-hmm. along that way. Nothing did do anything crazy, it just started hurting. Yeah. So well, he's bowled a million games. <laughs> he's bowled Especially all of, him. And all of the games. He's bowled all of the games. He's bowled every game. <laughs> and that could it could be one of those things where, you know, it just doesn't feel great, it takes a little bit yeah. off in one shot and he flat tens instead of striking. Literally, that's all it takes. Zings it or whatever, but uh, versus a dialed in I think it's Simon's week to win. It's just simple as that. I don't think there's no behind, bigger behind the scenes. It's just Simon's tournament to win. They are both going for their sixth career major. Yeah. Which is a lot. More than it's I like think six more than everybody in this that's room. That's current like full time actors. That's twelve more than us, Packy. No, they me twenty six. That's ten more than us, Packy. Eleven after this week. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so they would both. Obviously, we reached number six. Simo would be the youngest by four years. Belmo was. And he's just going to keep breaking that. DJ Wood is two months shy of being the youngest. Oh, Belmo. really? He's, he was only, he's only two months older than Belmo when Belmo won his number six. So, mm-hmm. scary. Scary thing about what these two are doing. In an era where there's not as many title events per year, and they've got 23 and four. They're literally in a times. world of their own. It's so sick to see, and it's so frustrating to see. <laughs> From a competitor standpoint, it's like. God, bro, how do we be that? I and then, like but be, just as a fan of the sport, it's like, that's insane. I feel like it'd be way more frustrating if I was right-handed. Yeah, I would like, agree. I'd be like, man, why can't I just do that? I would agree. This is sad. Wait, there, was, there was points where Simo, during match play, would go on one pair. He was firing at about 20 miles an hour, up eight with he your nose. He's and the most, you can see the oil, we said this. The next game, he slid 40 through at about 13 miles an hour across left of fifth arrow. He can and see he went the oil. Yeah, and he, we make this joke, he can look at the lane and see the oil. Physically, he can physically <laughs> see the oil. He has a superpower that he can might, see exactly where he needs to it throw. It might look like Ogu can see the oil with those eyes, <laughs> but Simo can legitimately see the oil. He has x-ray oil. vision for like, bowling oil. He just looks at this lane and he goes, yeah, I knew I needed to move 10 right on this pair. That's what I love so much about Simo's game is he's the most fearless bowler ever. If if it he's does if he's doing it up seven, trouble, it does get him in trouble. And we talk about that all the time, where he where he Try tries to, to out trick it. But I love that so much about him, where he could be throwing it up seven, fireballing it, and then it's like, Simon, you need a big game this last game. And he goes, okay, forty two to the left, throws it a mile down the lane, slow hooks it, finds a way to shoot two fifty. And when a lot of people were like, I'm gonna live or die by playing where I have the whole week. My final point, and as we close this puppy down on choosing who wins and who loses. I think Simo wins if he just plays. Just where, beat EJ wherever EJ's trying to play. Where Yes. Just where, out if, bowl him there. If Please, he, Simo. If, if EJ's hooking the lane and Simo hooks the lane, Simo will Don't win. Don't try to trick it up six in the title <laughs> match. Just, With a urethane just, ball. <laughs> just, out, just out play him in that same exact part of the lane. And I think Simo would have eight more titles if he did that. I've never wanted to see anybody throw a plastic ball up five more than Simo right now. <laughs> he can. That's the thing. But he will, and he, his brain works it that way. He made the Scorpion show last year because he threw plastic oh, up yeah. 15 in game The last That's game. Because right. they were crazy hard. He went to the worst pair in the building. And he fired the head, the ball at the one at three, the, at the one three, knowing I don't need a big game. I just need like one ninety or better. Yeah, and he then took he shot like two thirty. She, she shot two forty to make it by about fifteen pins. Yeah, so he needed two twenty. That's yeah. so insane. Yeah. So, final predictions on score: Simo over EJ. Scores were low. This is the lowest scoring pace we've seen besides the U.S. I Open. I also would like to see Simo win, just for a perspective of I want the Player of the Year race to be. Super, super close. Yeah. yeah, then it just comes down to like... Then the back half, the, then the back half, the extra stuff at the end of the season, matters. the playoffs, the finals, matters. More. So what's the, sco- what's the winning score? I remember... 232. 232? So I, have to, I have to double check this. But last year, with the 17-man step ladder, that's a lot of games. That's eight... That's 32 games. Mm-hmm. And Belmo had three 230 games in the final step ladder. Mm-hmm. The rest of the field combined of the 17, including you, had, I believe, three. That's crazy. So scores were low, scores are low on that pair last year. And we just pulled the PBA League match earlier today. Scores were low. Lanes were very different. The lanes were very different. Scores weren't that low for our match just because of the left lane. 230 and 260 bolt on that but lane. The right but, lane but the right lane is tricky, so that just comes into play. It lowers the score. However, what's your scoring prediction? 
I'm going I'll, to. I'll, I'll, I'll make you make a scoring prediction. You, yeah, you, you have to do a scoring prediction. You don't, you don't have to pick who wins with what games, but I'm going to make you pick numbers. I'm going 224 over 202. I said 232. I'll pick 213. Okay. I think it's going to be the 220s. 220 what? 8 to 3. Oh, oh, you think it's gonna be? A, you think it's gonna be a count? Two twenty-eight, two twenty-three. So last year in the title match, EJ missed three six ten right off the get-go, and then missed another one. Never put any pressure on Velmo. I think they both are aware that they can't give e- each other an ounce. Yeah. To, to breathe. And EJ will have the warm-up game. If he gets there, he'll have the warm-up game to kind of get a little bit of the pressure out of the way. Yeah. And he'll have understand the pair. a little bit more understanding of the pair. When, when, so EJ beat Simo in Shark that started this whole run that EJ's on. He's won six straight yeah. televised matches. That was the first time he beat Simo on TV. Wow. Yeah, and, and, now, and EJ came, came to us and to took, it, get back. He took it He took it to heart and was like, you guys picked Simo to beat me? Screw you guys. And we were like, we wait, show, we, we were like, hold on. You watched the pre-show? <laughs> like, no, we, we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't pick Simo, we picked Shota. Oh, Shota. But, picked Shota. Um, yeah, you're right. That's right. So, so I haven't been under out with Nolan since Springfield. Yeah. Simon also won that one. Oh, are you his good luck charm? Ooh, I'm, Nolan's. I, I started this job two Nolan's years ago. Nolan's picking Simon. Yeah, you and, started this job two years ago. And these they've are the won all of the happened. titles. They've Both won of them everything. have won all Both of the titles. You don't know anyone else besides Simon and EJ. We need to fire I, my, Nolan. So my dad has been here this week. and I, I bowled the pro-am with him. Yes, you did. And I whooped him. Yes, he, he choked him to death. Yeah, he could have beat me. Um, I've talked to EJ and Simon, I think, more than my own father over the last two years because they just keep making these finals. Just keep making finals. It's like you do those like pre- You need to talk to your dad more first off. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where, that's where we need you to You do your pre-interviews where like, we already know all the answers. Can we just fill them in? They can. Can I just go call my dad? All right, so Simon wins the TLC to make it interesting. Congratulations to whoever wins. Um, of course. And me for making the tour finals if this is the result. Yeah, congrats to that. Thanks. <laughs> I'll well, be on guys. a plane watching. Yeah. Well, guys, go tune in right now. Because right now, Fox. This is Not Big FS1. Fox at noon. 1 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. Eastern. You're central. I used to be central. I, dude, I don't it. know anymore. 1 p.m. It's been a long tour season. 1 p.m. Eastern, Fox. Not Fox Sports. If Fox. you guys are here right now at the end of this video, it's right now. Go. So we'll see you. Thank Turn you, Nolan, TV. for coming and joining Absolutely. the whole time, not just nerding with Nolan. You just got to be a guest. Maybe this will be more of a regular thing. That would be pretty Unless cool. Simon wins, then we can't be having him win every time. <laughs> <laughs> he already almost does. Some of, some of us others need to. You know, <laughs> yeah, we need another one. You can also watch on the Fox Sports app. Just throw that oh, out there. Yes, for Fox, Sports, Fox app Sports app or on your TV. So either one. Fresh Head over there right now. TOC finals coming in. Bye, guys. Bye. Also, follow the PBA on all their social media. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of you have been doing that lately. It's been cool. So keep doing it. It's been great for Nolan and his job. So let's keep Nolan's job. Let me get a raise. Let me get a raise. (laughs)